Hello and welcome to this training. Uh, this is Francis here from the Multilet Cash Flow System and today we're going to take a look inside rent to rent and see if it'll work for you and uh, if it can boost your cash flow and I can assure you that it will. Um, so today the, the, the webinar, the training is going to take about an hour so I know everybody's uh, busy. I'm going to try not to go over the hour. So what are we going to be covering today? Well for the big one I suppose is why do rent to rent at all? Um, what's the plan? Everybody needs a plan. Uh, what's the analogy? Somebody told me the other day that um, if you're going to cut down a tree, you should spend three quarters of an hour making sure that, that the axe is sharp. Um, otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time. So that's what creating a plan is all about. We're going to be talking about landlords, uh, people you, uh, you must t t to deal with on your rent to rent journey. Also talking about the agents. Uh, the t tenants, that's the three very important components you're going to need. Uh, systems and support. When I first got into rent to rent I didn't really understand about systems too much. Now I, I realize that systems are absolutely huge so over the last couple of years we've been focusing quite a bit of time and energy on that. And support, well everybody needs a bit of support from time to time and we've got what I believe to be one of the best support communities um, in the property world. And also going to be telling you about our quite amazing Discovery Day. We, we hold these from time to time and we've got one coming up soon. So to make this little training easy, we've divided it into seven sections and I'll be covering each of those in a bit more detail. Um, so if you've got time, we're just about to start. You can maybe tweet a friend, send them a, a tweet or whatever it is, or send them a message on Facebook with a link to come and join us. So I'll be pausing from time to time and it's not because I've forgotten what I was saying, it's because I'm having a drink. And today I've got coconut water beside me. Uh, we've only got an hour today, so obviously I can't tell you everything there is to know about rent to rent So you can check out our website after the training, if you like. And the URL is on the bottom of every email of uh, every um, slide. Um, sorry, it's www.multiletcashflowsystem.com, and you'll come to this page. If you click on the How It Works tab, which you just see the red. Uh, um, arrows come down at the top of the screen. That will give you more of an insight into rent to rent if you're if you're new to the uh, the concept. And also, you might want to check out all the other pages, but especially the testimonial page, which we we'll think about changing the name of it to the inspirational page because uh, it's all results based and there's some amazing stories on there. So we all start every training and every live event that we do with this slide, a rent to rent in a nutshell. Um, I used to assume that everybody knew what rent to rent is, but of course that may not necessarily be the case. So in a nutshell, what is it as far as we're concerned? Because there's many different ways of doing rent to rent. So we find willing or distressed landlords, often we find they're a bit of each, they're, they're quite distressed, so that's why they're really pleased to work with us. Um, I used to think it was about guaranteeing the rent, and when we used to speak to uh, landlords in the early days, that's what we'd, we'd be focusing on, but we realized that there's 17 uh, different benefits that we can actually offer the landlord. Um, one property, for instance, the property used to belong to the, to the landlord's mother, and he'd rented it to students, and the property had been tr trashed. <laughs> so as we walked through the property, he was relating back to his, t his time in the house when the property was lovely and clean and the garden was really neat. So when we put our offer to the landlord, we, uh, of course he was interested in the money as well, but we put a, a lot of emphasis on the fact that we we're going to keep the property really clean. The cleaner is going to be in every um, week or two. Uh, the, the, the garden is going to be taken care of. We're going to give the place a bit of a refurb. It's going to be scrub clean. And he was really pleased to, uh, to hear that, and that's what kind of swung the deal for us on that one. Obviously, negotiate the rent and the refurb before you sign the contracts, which might seem like common sense, but there are stories of people who try to negotiate after they've signed the contract. Well, good luck with that one then. We individually let the rooms. Uh, of course, we like to work with young professionals. And then the profit margin for us is we take our rents uh, from the young professionals. We pay the landlord the agreed rent. We pay all the utility bills. And the profit that's left over is ours. And in our case, that ranges from about £600 to about 1350 I think is our highest one. Um, I used to think nobody's going to be able to do much better than that, but people in our support community, and we've got about 900 people in the community now, some people have made that look small, 
and uh, one guy, his first deal, the first deal he ever did, he just blew that out of the water. And I don't think, don't think we're talking about him today. Maybe another day. So we work with unlicensed multi-lets, and there's two two types of multi-lets. Some of them require a license. Some of them don't. Both are legal. The licensed ones um, take a lot more time to set up as a rule, and they're a bit more complex. So because we wanted to build a cash flow really fast we focused on um, unlicensed ones and you can set those up in a matter of days sometimes and you don't have to spend a lot of cash on it. Don't forget rent to rent, all it's about, we're focusing on building the cash flow arm of the business as fast as we c can, Give, uh, building yourself a really good foundational um, cash flow. So why choose rent to rent? This is uh, number one of the seven steps we're going to be covering today. Well there's no need for a mortgage with rent to rent so you don't have to go through that whole process we don't put in big deposits at all we used to put deposits in in the early days maybe a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds now we don't really put deposits in because you improve as you go on and you find ways to circumnavigate that we don't deal with expensive solicitors or surveyors i know these people are essential but when i buy property i look at the bills and think oh why why am i paying these you know but it's just one of the necessary evils, but rent to rent, we don't have that. Refurbishments, um, the, last, the last big HMO that I bought, House of Multiple Occupancy that I bought, it was a, a six bed property and we, we put in on suite suites on every room. It took about six months to com, uh, complete the work, six months to buy the house, and I think it cost about 50 grand as well. With rent to rent, the cheapest refurb we've done has cost us £150, that's all, and the fastest refurb is in three days. So we viewed it on um, a Thursday, took control of it on the Friday, had the, uh, the small refurb and got the tenants in by the Sunday. And those two properties are earning us about the same. So um, and the, the ownership is great, but if you're looking to build cash flow fast, rent to rent is definitely the way to go and you can always reinvest your, your money as you go forward over the years into properties so it's one of the fastest returns on investments out there but what we've created with our our own uh, brand of rent to rent is a true business in a box we have tried to think about just about everything uh, we think we have done over the last we've been doing it now for nearly five years so we've, we've been around the block a few times we've handed quite a few properties back taken on some more and that's a great thing about it as well if a property doesn't work, you just get to the end of the term and you can hand it back. Um, and I, I still believe that we're in the multi-let and especially the rent-to-rent -rent perfect storm because lending criteria is getting tougher all the time, it, it, it would seem. Emily, uh, my business partner and daughter who you saw on the first slide, she uh, bought her first house last year and she had to jump, jump through so many hoops to get it. Uh, there's a shortage of housing which just seems to go on and on as immigration into the UK seems to increase. There doesn't seem to be a coherent housing policy and I read some of some stats that for every house that's been built, seven people are either being born or entering the UK so that's not going to improve anytime soon. Um, I think it's fair to say there's lots of employment uncertainty about um, and also one of the facts that people kind of miss is that people are living longer these days. One in five of us, they say, are going to live to be 100 now. Um, so that means the, the inheritance is not coming through so fast. And in the meantime, people still have to have a place to live. I mean, I was most upset to find that my, my son James and my daughter Emily didn't want to live with me forever. They wanted to go out into the world to find out their, their own way. And like, like most kids, when they first leave, they, they went into a house share. And the great thing about it is you've got an, an immediate group of friends in a house share. So we find the demand for rooms is, is just growing exponentially. You know, we fill rooms as, as fast as anything these days. So I'm going to be introducing you to some of the guys in our community. This is Jack and his lovely wife. Didn't hear from Jack for about a year after we did the training, I guess. And sometimes we've got the support group where people are in there having a ch chat about things kind of every week. Other people, they go away, uh, they do what they've got to do, then they come back. And Jack was one of those people. You can see what Jack has said on the screen there. Read it faster than I can. Choosing MLCS was the best decision I've ever made. Thank you, Jack. To all my friends in the group, uh, you've all made the right choice. So he's a great guy. And once again, don't, don't really hear very much from Jack again. So uh, I reckon he's going to come back in a few more months and say, hey, I've got another 10. You know, that's the way it goes sometimes. So 
Uh, just having a little drink there. So the plan, I'm going to um, jump into the plan again at number two. Um, it, it's great to have something to aim for because if you're just getting into property and you just say, I want to get a house, another house, and then what? Uh, another one, and then what? You know, so um, if you've got something to aim for, and with me and Emily, we set a target when we, when we began rent to rent of £5,000 net. And the reason for that was Emily had pretty much cancelled all her subscriptions, uh, cancelled the gym membership that she never used to go to particularly, and all those things. And so she figured out if she could bring in £1,500 net cash flow, she would be pretty much financially free. Uh, for me, it was about 3500 there. So, so that's how we came to our, our set target of £5,000 net cash flow. So what would your target cash flow be? If you were to cancel all those things you didn't really need in your life, I know some people in our group, they've, um, they've downsized their car. One lady sold a BMW car, got herself a small van. So she used the £8,000 she got for a car to invest £1,000 in the van, and that gave her £7,000 cash flow. So she was determined, and she's done like, amazingly well. So how are you going to do it? Uh, who do I need to help me get there? Because um, what's that say? No, no man is an island. And I was one of those people, I don't know if you are, where I thought I could do everything myself and I could do better than them. But as you go through your property journey, which is a bit of a cliche to say that perhaps, but it, it is a property journey, you will find that you do need to build a team. You need some help. Um, and how do I control the workload? Because it does, um, the more properties you've got, we, we got to 10 properties before we got a property manager in place. And it was bedlam behind the scenes, I've got to be honest. And I wish we got a property manager in place by property number three, say. And I wish we'd been thinking about it from day one. And um, this is a big one for a lot of people. How do I sustain momentum and motivation? So I'm going to be going into these in a bit more detail in a minute. A uh, very important one is how and when will I celebrate? Um, because it's not all about the work at all. So having, having a plan, I would say, is crucial. So I'm pretty good with cliches. And, and this one coming up now, I can feel it. Is, uh, I know you've probably seen this one before, that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you've definitely got to start with a plan. Okay, so I'm going to be digging deeper into all those uh, in a second about the plan, but first of all, who am I? I know you're really intrigued, sat on the edge of your seat saying, who is this guy? Well, there, there I am sat on the edge of my seat with my family there. I'm very fortunate to have been working with my family in property for the last five years. I did work in construction for many years, 20, 20 plus years. It seems like a great blur now of work, um, working for other people, building their dreams, building their houses, building their property businesses up. And five years ago, I decided to quit that, um, give up my vans, uh, sell the vans up. I've still got one small van, which is handy. Uh, let all the guys go, sold a lot of my big old tools, and I just quit. I just kind of had enough of it. And that's, that's a story for another day, I guess. And my wife sat there in the middle. That's the, the lovely Jane. Jane was an accountant working for the local authority. And we both, about five years ago, we, we stopped. It was one of those times where you stop and uh, reassess things. I guess we had a, a lot of things happening in our personal life, and it was time for us to slow down a bit and decide what we wanted to do with the next 20 years. Because I kind of realized that the last 20 years had been a blur of work, and the next 20 years were going to be the same, and then I was probably going to die. And I wanted more than that from life. I think life should be an adventure. So we stopped chasing the money five years ago, um, my friend, I've got a coach and a mentor called Johnny Cass. One of the things, um, really profound things that he said to me, he said, Francis, there's a big difference between working and working smart. And I realized for 20 years I'd just been working and it was time to start working smart. So the young lady on the arm, that's my daughter Emily, once again. Emily had just got a degree in architecture and I gave her a book to read, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And if you haven't read that book, you need to get that book. Uh, I think she also read The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson at the same time. And she, and she had a bit of a mind shift, you know, and she decided she didn't want to go down the corporate um, work line at all as an architect, that she wanted to, do, to switch over to the, the, entrepreneurial, uh, the entrepreneurial side. So she wanted to come to work with us, but I told her that she couldn't. She needs to go out and find her own way first. And she kind of did that, which I'll tell you about in a second. And he had some chap at the back there. That's my son, James. James is our IT guy. He's quite into IT. Builds lots of websites for uh, people. So if, if 
poor IT skills or something that are holding you back. Well, I was very average in my uh, IT skills. I would say it's good to think about who can you get to help you because you will need help with that as well. So think about who you can build into your team. So in our team, we've got me, I was in construction, my wife was an accountant, Emily was an architect, and James was into IT. So it's a good starting place for us. That, uh, you know. So Jane and James, they've got lives, they've got friends. Uh, Emily's got friends as well, not so much me, I'm a bit obsessed with property. So they, they took a bit of a back seat, Jane and James, and me and Emily, we, we drove on with the rent to rent business, because uh, although rent to rent has been around for 20 years, Emily brought it to me as a new concept, I've not really heard of it before. Uh, we've done lots of exploring and decided that um, it was great, it was legal, it was ethical, and decided we were going to make a go of it. So we set up, as I said, 10 properties in the first six months and created a cash flow of £5,000, a crazy time. Then we got asked to speak at a couple of events. This was, this was pretty much the first event we spoke at. And you can see our picture up there on the screen. Uh, this was on a Sunday morning. Was I nervous? Well, it was just a small audience, just a thousand people in the audience. Yeah, nervous is not the word for it. I was petrified. Um, but I found, as with a lot of things in life, often the thought of doing it is worse than actually doing it itself. And when we got up on the stage, um, I had some good information to share. The audience were keen you know, to hear it. So it, it became a fun sort of exchange, I guess. And uh, we kind of enjoyed it, actually, and went on from, from there to lots of other events. So I've been very fortunate to be asked to speak at the prestigious Berkshire Property um, Meet, which is no more. This is one of the very last ones. So I spoke at three of those. You can see everybody there has got our um, manual, The Seven Big Mistakes, and I'll tell you how you can get a copy of that in just a second. Uh, this, is, um, this was the first time I spoke there. So my, I wrote a book. Uh, it's called Mayhem Merger Multilet. And we got to the venue early, and we stuck a book underneath every ch uh, chair. So every person in the room, 261 people, got a prize to go home with that evening. Lots of smiles on their faces there, you can see. And over the years, we've done many of our own events. You know, as you can see, we tried to make them kind of fun, high energy. Everybody's got their hands up all the time, probably asking for free books, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, very fortunate as well to be able to get the community back together again. So we do something called the Big Reunion, and we've uh, got one coming up pretty soon. They're usually around kind of April time, and it's usually about 100 to 120 people get back together in the room, and they're real kind of energized. And the whole idea of the Big Reunion is to help people push push their business um, further. So we have lots of people to speak. Uh, people usually speak for half an hour. We keep it short and snappy, and it's really all just about helping people drive their businesses forward. So that's all good fun. So um, I'm kind of big on the lifestyle now, whereas before uh, my main focus was work, you know, work, 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 work. You get up, I have my alarm set every day for half past six, and when I look back at the last 20 years, I sometimes wonder what it was all about. So going forward, uh, we were going to be focused on the lifestyle a lot more. And this was, um, last year we did our training event, we held it up in the French Alps. Why, you might say, well, why not? There is a, that's, a, that's a small part of the group, there is more people, some people didn't ski, some people didn't come up on the mountain that day, and some people didn't make it to the rendezvous uh, point, they were probably on a mountain behind us, because the place was huge, the French Alps is not small. So um, there was quite a few of us went up there, and, and that was a real blast to... Uh, to mix education and fun as well, and such an amazing group of guys there, which I, I still stay in contact with a lot of them, actually. And you can see the lady in the blue jacket in the front, that's um, Sarka. She said it was the best property course she ever attended, so it's great. So that's some um, property training in cold places. We also do property training in the sun. I kind of prefer the sun myself. So we went with Johnny Cash, you can see the, the group picture. There's me, um, I actually took this picture, so I had to Photoshop myself in with some tea there afterwards, but you can see Johnny there right beside me. Johnny's an Australian coach, came all the way from uh, Australia to England and to the Algarve. That was a group, there was a group of about 12 of us, and the following year we did it again, and there was a group of 30 of us, but nobody took a picture that year. So, yeah, we've, um, you know, we, we like to be focused on the lifestyle as well these days. It's not all about work, I think, as well. Um, over that time, we've created lots of educational material, uh, the simple rent-to-rent -rent business plan, endless tenants will tell people how to keep their rooms full at all time. 
Excuse me, time for a drink. When we got into property, I couldn't understand why a lot of landlords seem to accept voids of 5 to 10%. If you multiply that with all the rooms you've got and all the properties and the years that you're going to be doing this, you're talking thousands of pounds. So we came to a decision. We were going to eradicate voids forever. And we did, pretty much, from our portfolio. Um, also, people asking us, how do you employ a property manager? So we created a manual on that. And probably our best selling manual to date is a systems masterclass. And that tells you how to get some really cool property management software as well. Uh, finding a perfect agent is something we focused a lot of time on. A lot of people in rent to rent are scared of agents, so they try to focus on getting deals from landlords, which is great. But sometimes that can be like trying to catch a fish at the side of the ocean, I think. Whereas uh, getting, getting an agent on board, getting an agent as part of your team is like going to Sainsbury's to the fish counter. They've got all the fish there. You've just got to know what um, questions to ask. So this is an on online course which we're creating at the moment. Over the years, we've created uh, another couple of books, Rent to Rent Secrets, 52 Multi-Let Tips, Smith and Murder, and our best-selling Instant Rent to Rent Deal Calculator as well. So all good stuff. We've spent an eternity of time to make sure this is um, the best that best can be. And like I've said, over this last couple of years, our big focus has been on lifestyle. So the last thing we want to do, we don't want to create another job for ourselves. Uh, we, we don't have an office at all. Um, we have very few staff. And it's all about keeping the lifestyle mobile, I think. I think um, the last thing I would ever want is to, to have to report to, to an office. Um, every day so we've done whatever we can to avoid that so another lovely lady from our community I want to introduce you to the lovely Sam you can see that's my rent to rent opportunity you went belly up two more offers accepted and, and this is just great guys Sam, Sam's not been doing um, rent to rent for very long I think she she might have some other experience in property I think but um, so, such great people in the community they're um, coming to our support group most of the days and questions are answered in the support group usually within 24 hours so it's like having a group of consultants for you just sat there waiting for you to ask <laughs> so let's jump back to the plan then so what is your big reason why I'm going to put all these three up and I think we've got a picture of the business plan as well so we go through these in a bit more depth in the business plan and I'll tell you how you can get that for free in just a second so knowing your big reason why and my big reason why is a word really it's freedom because after working for the man if you like for 20 years and feeling a bit stifled not being able to spend maybe as much time with my family as I would have liked to or my friends the um, the, the, the main focus when I set up the rent to rent business is to be free. So I don't really set my alarm clock now at all after setting it at half past six for 20 plus years. Um, the only times I set my alarm clock is when I've got to get an early flight and I do try to avoid that as well. Um, it's a good idea to know your, your financially free figure. And that is... If you were to cancel everything in your life, all the things you don't really need when you sit down and go through it, and what we did, uh, we got our bank statements out and we cut out loads of stuff. We, we unsubscribe from things. You can, you can always subscribe to things again in the future, but for now, you're trying to, you're trying to set yourself financially free. You're trying to set up a rent to rent business where you don't have to get up to go to work every day. That was our main uh, focus. So figuring out what you're financially free number is and your big reason for doing this is crucial and also another one is what's liable to stop you doing this well um, for me at the time a lot of my family and friends thought I was crazy they thought I was joining some sort of cult and if you're working in property you can probably relate to that but I think it goes a bit deeper than that I think it's um, there's, a, there's a bit of a fear in that really that they don't really want you to succeed because then that might make them question their lives and they might have to change and people don't like change and I can say that some of my um, so-called friends at the time they, they would have been happy if, if I'd have fallen flat on my face I think so um, I made sure that wasn't going to happen and also some of the Facebook forums I've seen so much negativity in some of the Facebook uh, forums especially aimed at rent to rent and once again I think it's a fear of people don't really understand it themselves 
So they kind of criticize the whole thing to make it seem bad, and then they can draw a line under that in their mind. So I kind of avoid all that stuff. I used to go on the Facebook forums, but not quite so much now, to be honest. It's, um, you can drown in Facebook. Uh, I've got a friend who calls it, um, it's like diving into a great big pool of filth, he says. <laughs> like, so Facebook's okay, but don't spend too much time on it. So the plan, um, how am I going to do this? If you've not done something called Wealth Dynamics, or it could be called Talent Dynamics as well, I think it's called, uh, you need to do that. I think it costs about £60, you can find it online, talentdynamics.com, and everybody in our team did this test, and you can find out your strengths, that means the, the things you, you should be doing in your business, and maybe the things that you shouldn't be. We thought Emily would be great at showing the rooms, but she struggled with that a bit, when we've done the talent dynamics, we, we can understand why that was a bad thing for her. She's more kind of an admin girl behind the scenes, like an architect. Um, so she focused on that a bit more. And I was showing the rooms for a little while until we decided um, it's better to, idea to get a property manager on board. Um, do you need to educate yourself? I definitely needed to do this. Some people have said, because I was working in construction, it was easy for me. But construction and property investing are two completely t t t different things, I can assure you. Um, you might think that you can um, you know, run with rent to rent and do well, and some people do. They just come on the discovery date, and that's enough information for them. Uh, other people might need some more tra training, and we do offer some more training after that, plus the support of the community. And we do do a bit of mentoring and hand holding as well. So it depends how much education you need in yourself. Um, I'm a big person, uh, I, I tend to buy a lot of educational, I'm always buying books, I'm always buying events if I think it's good, so I'm a big believer in education, in fact I've probably spent £40,000 on my own education for now, and my big rule on that is that if you can earn £2 back for every pound you spend, why would you not, you know, um, my, biggest, my biggest expense uh, on education was £5,000, plus VAT that I signed for a, a training. Um, it wasn't for a year, it wasn't for a month, it wasn't for a week, it was for one day. One day's training, £5,000 plus VAT. And that day was from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and it was some of the best money I'd ever spent. And I'll do it again in the blink of an eye. Uh, so this is really important. People kind of miss this one sometime. We're all very busy these days. So if you're going to, if you want to re-educate yourself and build a new business from scratch, say, doing rent to rent, where can you free up some time in your life? And for me, going back five years ago, that's when I turned my TV off pretty much for good. I don't listen to the radio much any day, stop reading newspapers. And I cancelled some of my negative friends as well. I didn't really cancel them as such. They kind of drifted away, and some new and better friends kind of drifted into my radar. And I think that, that kind of happens na na naturally. But you do have to consider where can you free up time in your life that you're going to need able to implement everything that you've learned. Continuing with the plan, who do I need to help me? Uh, like I said, I was one of those guys who thought I could do everything myself and I soon realized that was not the case. So getting a property manager in place, uh, our property manager's name is Will and Will joined us when we got to property number 10. In hindsight, that should have been property number 3. And you might think that you can't afford a property manager, but you can. There's ways to um, do that. We, we increased our admin fee from £50 for every person who moves into the rooms to 150 And that was pretty much enough to pay uh, Will. So he got a bonus as well every time he filled a room. So you, you can employ a property manager. Uh, I'd say the best thing is to ease them in. Get somebody to come and work for you part-time to start with. Uh, tell them about the business, how you plan to grow. grow, grow and then they, um, they just get paid initially for the hours that they do. Uh, this is something I wish we'd done from day one, create a team document and a leveraged document. So our team document had people like painters on it, handymen, uh, plumbers, cleaners, gardeners, somebody to help us with admin, somebody to help us with IT. And what we did, we wrote down three names of each because we took over one job where uh, the day we took it over, the plumber suddenly announced he couldn't do it because he'd got this big job. The painter had just come back from a skiing trip with a broken leg, so he couldn't paint. And the cleaner we had, she'd met a rich guy and declared that she wasn't going to work for anybody else at all. So we were a bit stuck then, so we started fishing around. 
we found some people who weren't that good, their work wasn't very good, and it created problems and pro pro problems. So if we'd have created a team to, to, to document at the start, I wrote down three names of so people we knew were good, then if the first one can't do it, you go on to the next one. And we update that pretty much every month. Um, how do you find good tr tradesmen? Um, ask around to recommendations for somebody who's good, and then when you find somebody good, ask him to recommend his friends, because we find that birds of a feather often stay together. So uh, we build that up, and we've got a, we've got quite an extensive list now. And then the leverage one. This was um, this was a bit life changing for me and Emily. We've got this thing where we get to the end of the week and we zen the office. So we'll zen our desks. So we take everything off the desk. We file it away. Put things in the bin so it's all cleared. And we zen our business as well. So. I wrote a list of all the jobs I didn't really enjoy doing and the jobs were of low value to me. And I wrote three names beside each of uh, people I thought were quite capable. And then I started phoning them up and getting them to come to do some work for, for us. So that was my leverage document and that changed everything. I also put on there, um, trying to get somebody to put the bins out. I don't enjoy doing that, but my wife uh, crosses that out all the time. She insists uh, I've got to put the bins out myself. So uh, funny I went to everybody. This, this one is also huge, actually, because it, it can be a lonely place out there. So, and it, it is okay to ask for, for help. And we've got a great way of doing this, uh, which I think I've got on a slide coming up in a minute that we do on the training, which is pretty awesome. But we find that the people who do uh, really, really well in our support group are the people who work with somebody else. Um, lots of people actually meet, meet up on the events, and I'll tell you how we do that in a minute. So how do I build that team? Where do I advertise? Well, to find our property manager, we advertised in an agency uh, called Reed, R-E-E-D, which uh, that was pretty good at the time. That was about three and a half years ago now. It seems there's been a bit of a shift now, and there's another one um, on the scene. It's called Indeed. So there's Reed and Indeed, and that's I-N-D-E-E-D. -E -E um, it's free to advertise on Indeed. You can pay for the upgrade, but um, I recently advertised for an admin person on there, I got 40 applicants, whittled it down to wait and uh, found somebody, and that was all free. Uh, what pay structure? Well, I've already told you how we pay our property manager. That's pretty much from the admin uh, fees that we charge our tenants. And the the lady who was coming in to do some admin, admin for me, we were paying her, um, I think it was 10 pounds an hour, and she was doing eight hours uh, a week. So you know they could do kind of four hours a week for you, but Getting a person to help you with admin is, is a huge one as well. I know lots of people get a virtual assistant, uh, somebody in the Philippines, and pay them a very small amount. But I, I, I tried that a couple of times. It was eating a bit too much of my time up trying to find the right person, so I just decided to go down the traditional route. And also, I like to talk to people face-to-face -face a bit as well. It kind of works for me. Um, building teams, it's definitely a good idea. It's a beginner's you mean to go on. I know people who have employed their friends to be their property managers, and then when it's ended, it's not ended uh, particularly well, because you know, relationships, sometimes they start really well, and if things don't go to plan, they don't end at all well. And I've heard all sorts of um, stories about uh, the ending of relationships with property managers, and some of them not very nice. So we have a contract in place, which is part part of our manual, employing a property manager for free, you can get that as a download, and we do things officially, you know, so everything's as it, as it should be. So, so the next important part really is um, sustaining momentum and motivation, so I've got a question for you, how often do you shower? Um, sorry if that's a bit of a personal one for you there, um, I shower daily, I hope you do as, as well. Motivation is something I need daily myself. We've, we've got a logo in our business. Uh, it's a little head with cogs inside, which means it's a man who's thinking, so he's working smart. And inside the head it says, I can, which is quite a positive you know, statement to say, I think I can. And it also stands for improvement is constant and never ending. And we see that on every email. Um, it's on uh, the logos. It's on the manuals. You know, it says it's everywhere. So that's a bit of daily motivation that I've got. And also being around the right people, I think. Um, if you've got people around you who are a bit negative, they start the day with a whinge, maybe it's time to sort of ease those people out of your life and, so, and find somebody a bit more negative. Um, do, you have, do you have trouble saying no? 
because uh, I used to, in fact, sometimes I, I still do. When somebody asks you to do something, maybe come to speak at their event or help you with things, it's quite um, nice to be asked, I guess. And I was saying yes to everything. But th these days, I think very carefully, like um, the way I spend my time, is this going to help me get to where I want to be? So you remember that word I was talking about at the start, freedom, and maybe a financially free uh, figure? That's something you should be aiming for. So how do you spend your time? How do you spend your day? Are you spending your time wisely moving towards the goal? And stay, staying plugged in, this is absolutely huge for me because it's lonely out there in the world for sure. So being a part of a community is just a mega, I think. And we've got a community of nearly a, a thousand. One of the, like I said, I keep saying this, one of the best uh, communities around, I think. So this is our... Facebook group. This is our community. You can see I've drawn some red lines around the file section. That's where we keep all our expensive contracts and everything. Uh, the second red ring at the top there, that's the search bar where you can search for um, any discussion over the last five years. And we've got accountants, we've got six agents in our group, uh, we've got solicitors, we've got all sorts of things. So whatever you need to know, we've got some Article 4 experts in there as well. Whatever you need to know, we've probably got it um, in our group there. And then down the bottom, you can see it's the MLCS family map. Everybody who joins the community, we put them on the map. And I encourage people to meet up in their own patch. So all you've got to do is hover over the, um, the little red balloon. You can contact the person on Facebook. And then you, then you get to meet them because, it's like I say, it's a lonely place out there. So much, um, it's much better to be um, talking to somebody else on, on your journey. And that, we find that really helps people exponentially as well. So, how will I celebrate? This for us has kind of grown, really. Um, in the early days, we would always celebrate when we, when we got a deal signed and sealed. In fact, we didn't do it on the first 10, because the first 10 was just a big blur of work. But after that, we said, right, every time we get a house signed and sealed, so the last tenant has moved in, the, the ASTs have been signed, me and Emily would say, okay, we're going to... Um, Celebrate. So uh, sometimes I bought myself a nice watch. Uh, then me and Emily and we would take the family off to the spa for the day, and that, and that was okay. But after all, I, I kind of had enough of spas, you know. And then we would go for little trips, places, go out for a day, and we'd go for a nice meal in a restaurant. So really, whatever works for you is what you need to um, do. But we decided to take this up a scale recently, and I'm just I'm just going to tell you about that in a second. Why did we do this? Because Celebrating something. If you get, if you work hard to get a deal done, you're working with the landlord or the agents. You've negotiated a good price. You maybe furnished it, got a load of stuff off eBay, organised your fans. You've got some people in to tidy it up, paint the place. You've been advertising for the tenants, got the tenants in. Um, the last person's moved in. You're going to make a thousand pounds a month. You worked hard for it. So by celebrating it at the end of that, that's like anchoring success, and that will drive you on to more success. Uh, well, recently, we've been setting ourselves much bigger targets. Um, this was kind of a bit of inspiration from people in the group, to be honest. What we've been doing, and a lot of people in the group have been doing, is giving each property a job to do. So uh, there's one chap in the, in the group, he, he's got a property that makes him... I think it's about 950 a month. So he said this is going to be his holiday house. So all the money he gets from that one particular house, he's got it on a three-year deal, he'll pay that into his holiday fund. So he'll get to the end of the year and he can afford a holiday, what's that, 11 grand-ish, I guess. And that's quite a nice trip. Um, so that's a great thing. I know there's other people in the group. There's a lady, she's starting an educational fund. I think she's got two or three houses that um, she puts it into the bank to pay for her kids education which is a great one another gentleman um, he, I don't think it's water he's doing in India but he's got a charity in India and he's, uh, he's he wants to get to 10 houses then he's going to divert all the money from that into a charitable fund which is great for uh, tax for him as well I guess there's another little um, tip uh, we've got a charity that we support ourselves the um, multi cashier system we like to support starlight for terminally ill ch children and we give it a little bit from each each time we do an event we give a little bit to starlight and last year we did a whole event where we raised i think four thousand pounds and gave it to the starlight foundation so whatever you want to do with your cash i would say it's good to set yourself up um, a target first to be financially free stay or whatever 
you want to do, and then maybe set yourself a goal with a, um, a property to use a property to fund something, and that really drives you on. Well, last year we set a property up. We call it the Car Fund House. Uh, never ever bought a brand new car in my life, um, but I decided why not. So this is actually a purchase lease. So we signed a property for three years. We've had it already for about five months. That property is making us something like seven hundred and fifty pounds a month, and the lease on this car is about six hundred and fifty pounds a month. So the money makes us um, enough to pay the lease and a little bit on in insurance as well. So it feels like it's a free car, and it was quite a day where. I could take my wife to the showroom to pick the, uh, the, uh, the car. And, you know, it's a feel-good factor with that as well. And there is an, another little story behind that. Uh, when I was doing my uh, carpentry back in the day, when when, when we uh, when the showroom opened, it's about ten miles away from me. I actually hung the doors um, in this place, and, and I was there when they moved the cars in. And you know, it's been opened. And I remember I was on the balcony at the top, and I looked down, and I said to myself, one day. I'm going to get a car um, like this. So it took me 15 years to get there, but I got there. And anybody can do this. I said, set yourself a goal with a few houses, two, three, four, five houses to become financially free. And then you can set up a house to use it to fund anything. And it, it all becomes good fun then as well. And as you can tell, I get quite enthusiastic about it all. So number three, uh, why would a landlord do it? The question is, if you're making as much out of a property as a landlord, why would he just not keep the money for himself? Well, this, this particular property I'm thinking of, the guy was about, um, he must be in early 30s, I think, a bit of an entrepreneurial type. I think he inherited a big old Victorian house from somebody in the family. So he moved in with his girlfriend and helped them fund the refurb on it. He rented out rooms, rented out three of the rooms. Unfortunately for him, his girlfriend decided to move out with one of the guys that had moved in to the rooms. So uh, he had a bit of a midlife crisis, did the landlord, and he went off and joined the army. So management of the property went to his mum, uh, and apparently the story goes that she moved off to Cyprus to work on her suntan. She's quite interested in the suntan, you can see there. And the management went to her mother, uh, and I imagine this is the way she looks. And that, that was okay, apart from one problem, the, the grandmother didn't like like strangers in the house and I kid you not so when you're trying to rent a property out to young professionals and she'd only rent it to people that she knew that was going nowhere fast so then the property went to an agent unfortunately there are agents who know how to deal with multi-let properties and agents that don't this one didn't uh, so the property had been empty for a while I think they had rats in the property and we came along got rid of the two-legged rats got, got, got rid of the place uh, the four-legged rats Neither of them were paying any rent and turned the property around pretty quickly. So what are the type of landlords we've got? We've got a guy who owns a chemist shop. We've got a soldier. Lots of uh, divorce situations where there's a spare house. Uh, you can see the guy on the end holding his phone. There's one particular landlord, an experienced landlord. We've got two properties with him. Just got sick and tired of answering the phone to um, students. He said, all they ever do is complain. So, and, and he was retirement age, so he was kind of happy to hand us the keys. The guy in the middle, the barrister, oh, there's a barrister I'm thinking of, got two properties off him as well, not been to Bristol for 20 years, not interested in the properties in the slightest. All he wants is the money in the bank. Uh, the soldier I've told you about, the chemist on the end, I always get confused about this. I think he actually owns a post office, actually. So, uh, But he's, uh, he's a busy guy always having troubles with staff, can't seem to keep his staff. And when we viewed his property, the sofas were illegal, the locks were illegal, the fire alarms were falling off the ceiling, some of the doors weren't shut. He knew he was breaking the rules, but he didn't have time to uh, fix it. So he was just so glad to hand the keys over to us so he can sleep okay again. And the husband and wife there, we've got quite a few properties where maybe a parent has died and the property's been in inherited so people think they can rent the properties out themselves but it's not quite as easy as they think it is if you don't know what you're uh, t t doing so they try to do that for a couple of years and eventually give the property to us and one couple I'm thinking of they actually sold each other's houses or they sold their own I mean you know and they bought themselves a little flat and they're off tra traveling the world endlessly which is quite a nice way to live I think as well good for them uh, but mostly our landlords, they suffer from this, really. They just don't have time. And I've got a little case study coming up in a second. And we come along, we've, we've got the time, we've got the skills now, we can teach you all of this to get your business up and running. Oh, there she goes again, busy. Uh, 
So number four of our top seven, why would an agent do it? Why, why would an agent do it? So surely they can just do the same as we're doing and keep all the money for themselves? Well, if you think, think of a, a standard kind of agent who's, who, who are dealing with students. So we deal with one agent and let's say um, we took over a property where there were six students in the property. So the agent would have to sign all, all the ASTs, they'd have to do the interim inspections, they'd have to chase rent with all of those ones, uh, they'd have to sort out the bills with the property at the end of the term. Uh, students are often creating a mess, so they have to come and try and liaise with the landlord to get refurbs done and get it tidied up. Uh, they don't usually have cleaners, which I can never understand why. So at the end of the term, the property is usually a mess. Well, we come along, we say to the agent, look, the only person you've got to deal with is us. We're very professional. We'll always do what we say we're going to do. We'll always pay the rent on time. We'll take care of the utilities. You won't have to do any of that at all. The only person you deal with is us and we'll deal with the young professionals. So that's freed up a huge amount of time for the agent on that one house. And say they've got 20 that you can t t take off them. As soon as the penny drops that the agent understands that fundamentally you're working for them for f free, they absolutely love you. So that's one thing. So how else can you get the agent, uh, get their attention? Well, what about if you pay them higher admin fees? So our agent fees in Bristol, say, where we work, the fees are about £400 when we sign a property up. So to get the agent's attention, we said, why don't we pay you 50% more so we can pay you £600. Uh, this kind of confused the agents a little bit. Uh, there's a good word for this, discombobulation, I think it is, bewildered and bemused. Um, but we said, no, we think you're worth more, so we're happy to pay you some more. So first of all, we're doing all the agents' work for them and we're paying them higher fees. So why would they not choose to work with us and somebody else? What else can we do? Well, if you've got a property where you're earning a thousand pounds a month from, can you also afford to pay the agent a retainer, maybe fifty pounds a month from that? Because the agents like to think and work in fees, also small fees. So if the landlord is still on board, the agent will be getting paid a monthly retainer from the landlord, plus some fees from the landlord. They'd get um, an annual fee from us, which could be larger than the usual fee, plus you could also pay them a retainer each month. So do you think that will really get the agents um, working for you and get the agents on your side? That's what's really driven our business in Bristol forward over the last four years. And those are actually massive tips. I hope you're writing those down, actually. Write them down now while I have a little drink. <clears throat> and it won't be long before you see this. Now, the miserable agent is gone and you find somebody who's willing to work with you and you come through the door he says, hey, how's it going? I'm so pleased to see you. How many agents do you need on board on your team? Well, roughly speaking, on average, I reckon you need one. That's all you need. People think you need loads of agents you know, all over town. Not true. We, um, we initially spoke to 10 agents. Five of them were prepared to work with us. Uh, we got deals off three of them. Predominantly, we got deals off one of them. And she calls us up now every month or so, you know, sometimes it's a good deal, sometimes not, but we always go to, um, you know, to meet her, to spend some time with her to work on our relationships. And that's actually another huge tip. You should be working on a long-term relationship. Um, never go in for a snog on the first date. That's always going to end in tears. So tenants, this is another uh, crucial um, aspect of the business. You need to be able to work with uh, the landlords, find the deals. You need to be able to work with agents. But if you haven't got any uh, tenants in the property paying the bills, of course, it's all for nothing. This is, um, this is our type of t tenant there, I'd say. We did, we did initially work with LHA, uh, people claiming, and didn't really enjoy that. Didn't really enjoy that world. It was kind of hassly, and I'd go so far as to say that LHA and HMO is an oxymoron, I'd say, and it should be avoided there. I've said it. Um, people say you can make more money in that field. Maybe you can, but it's just not, it's not the life that um, I enjoy and it's about the lifestyle as well for me. We also dealt with students for a while. I find students a bit kind of immature, it's kind of eating up our time. Uh, the, the lifestyle of it all is, is big um, for us. We just really enjoy working with young professionals and why is that? Well, they all come from Middle England. I'd say about 50% of our tenants are graduates. I can't remember the last time uh, we didn't get paid. So sometimes somebody's a bit slow to pay and we send them an email and they say, whoops, I'm so sorry, 
and they fix it and pay immediately. Um, we don't get into damaging our pro properties at all. We've got a couple of properties full of engineers actually, so if anything does break in the property, it's great because they just fix it themselves. Uh, they never write us, they never phone us, they just truck on, pay the bills, no fuss, and that's the way we like it. Uh, and also, it's, it's about supply and demand, I think, that the supply of tenants we find, if you do your research and set your rent-to-rent -rent company up in the right place, you'll get an endless supply of tenants. And um, like I say, it's not all about the money, it's, it's about the lifestyle as well. Okay, number six uh, in our top seven is his systems and support. When we first got into this, we had no idea about systems at all. Uh, and about a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, we decided to drop everything and focus our entire attention on creating systems in the business. Uh, it, it took us about uh, about six months to get everything kind of set up. Something we've added this last 12 months or so is some just absolutely awesome, and I don't often say that word, awesome property management software. This software um, is some of the best software out there, and you, pay, you can pay hundreds for this. I know somebody paying... 200 pounds a month and his system is average uh, we can set you up with our system for 20 pounds a month yeah 20 pounds a month and and our system is just amazing we've got um, one touch referencing so we we send a form to the tenant he, he, he puts the details into the system comes back to us we hit a button and we get references sent to um, his landlord his employer it's all kind of stuff so it's just click and it's done and you don't forget things then and we've also got one ten uh, touch tenancy creation as well. So all the forms, all the contracts, everything that you need to send to the tenant legally, one touch, and they get sent. So you never forget things. And that in itself has saved us hours. Multiply that by all the tenants you've got in your rooms, all the rooms you've got, all the houses you've got, kind of all the years. We're actually saving like weeks and weeks of time. Um, I think our, our software is better than some, some of the software I know that you pay £200 a month for. We spent a load of time getting all this just right. And also, we try to leverage and outsource uh, just about everything, to be honest. Um, I've got this great thing. People say leverage, but I think, how, how can I step back from a job? So I look at the jobs I'm doing in my business that are taking up um, a lot of time, and I think, how can I step back from this and leverage it, so outsource it? Um, I'll either eliminate it, automate it, delegate it, and if I can do one of those three, then I always think there's time to celebrate it as well. So leverage and outsource is, is huge, and um, our, our manual there, I think it's about 70 pages that when we go through everything, step by step, simple language that um, everybody understands, and that's why this is one of our best-selling manuals. Um, we're actually huge on this. Um, has this worked for us? How has this worked? Well, I visit our properties now. We've got around 25 properties in, in Bristol. I visit, I visit them annually, uh, maybe, maybe twice a year. Uh, Emily, she goes maybe three or four times a year. And then Will, he's around the properties, maybe does the viewings. The cleaner goes to the pro properties, of course, every week or two. So she's our spy. And that's another big tip there, actually. Get a re really good cleaner on board and train her up to be your spy. Um, and we've got an app with her. WhatsApp, and she takes any photographs of any kind of issues in the in the property, and she shares it with us. So we're just, we're just onto things immediately. So another big tip there. So I'd like to introduce you to somebody else from our community, the lovely guy Norman. Norman gives me such a hard time; he really does. So you can see what Norman says. You have a read. I'll have a little drink. Uh, I remember talking to Norman when he came on a discovery day, and then he booked onto the main training day, and I just had the feeling from Norman that this was big for him, for his family, that he, he had to get it to work, and, it, and he absolutely has. And, and this testimonial is probably about uh, a month old now, I'd say, so I, I know Norman's probably on, how many properties he's on for, he's probably on about five or six now, I would say, because once you get a bug and you start to roll, it just rolls out and rolls out. So. Um, but he's in no hurry. I know he's done one property at a time, got the next one, the next one. Lots of people use rent to rent, as we did, as a springboard. So you get to your financially free figure. Maybe for some people you want to get to twice that, or they set a goal of £5,000 a month or £10,000 a month. That's their springboard. And they use that to go on to other things, to buy properties or to do lease options or commercial conversions. 
but sorting out your cash flow so you've got a base and you don't have to drag yourself off to work every day is huge and that's our, our main focus. So I'm going to do a little case study now. This is the lovely Linda down in Ealing. And I recently done an interview with Linda. You can find it on the Multilet Cashflow uh, YouTube channel. I think it's on there at the moment. Uh, one of the nicest people in the community, although everybody's nice. And I thought I'd put some stats up here. So Linda's had this deal trucking along, 2015. Put a deposit in. I think this is one of uh, the first three deals that Linda did. So initially we put deposits in. Uh, these days we don't. And what we what we started to do a few years ago, we went back to the landlords, some of our landlords, where we built relationships up with them. We had the properties for some time, built up some trust, and we asked them if we can have the deposits back. Of the four landlords we asked, um, three of them did. One's a grumpy old git, and he just he just refused. He said no. You know. So you can you can see the Linus house is not the prettiest of houses at all. Is it? And uh, that's quite a common factor, I think, where maybe sometimes the landlords were struggling a bit because of the look of the house or the style. We come in, we know exactly how to set the properties up and um, take control of them and turn them around. So I wanted to put this one in. This isn't, this isn't exactly a high earner, £750. It's good. Um, this is a four bed. I think that's great. We've got four beds that make 750 And Linda did. She set up three rent to rent. And then she moved, in, moved into service to combination. And I've actually been to this, um, these apartments. This is where we've done the interview with Linda. Um, this was an agent called her up, if I get the story right, to come and view it as a rent to rent. She said, it doesn't really work for me as a rent to rent. It was an old building that had a complete refurb. So there was four houses back to back. But then Linda suddenly thought about service accommodation. Would it work for a service accommodation? And it would. So she took on all four of them. And she makes a call, £5,000 net cash flow per month from this block of four. So how many people here, you can, you can speak in the box if you like, you can say yes. How many people would be financially free with £5,000? And this is just one deal, signed and sealed, and that's her done. But of course, she's plowing on doing more. Um, very busy lady, she's got three kids, got a husband, she tra trains Taekwondo uh, four times a week, I think she said, and she's also done a bit of film work, but you'll have to watch the video on YouTube to find out exactly what that film work was, but very calm, lovely person. Uh, one of many, I would say, in our support community, we've got uh, knocking on a thousand people now, 950 odd, and I could have pulled out loads of interviews, you might know some of those people, there are so many stories, I've got to know a lot of these people kind of ever so well. So everybody's got their own story, everybody's got their own reason for doing it, but I think a big one is family, really, uh, freeing up your time. We're only on this planet for a short time, so why spend all your time working for somebody else? And who have we got in our community? We've got professional investors. Uh, every time we do an event, we ask people to hold their hands up who's been working in property for some time, so lots of professional investors, lots of experience landlords in our community who've um, maybe hit a wall with their investing and they want a way to boost their cash flow fast. Uh, we've got lots of agents, about six to eight agents that I know of and probably more. Uh, also lo loads of newbies, people just um, coming into the property industry for the first time. Lots of single mums seem to do very well actually and lots of startups. So we we've got a whole spectrum of um, pe people in the community and the great thing about it is that everybody supports every else and that's just the way we love it. So meet, meet Charlie Ray. Charlie's a great guy. Uh, you just have a little read of that while you have another drink. So um, Charlie's a great guy. He just trucks on nice and slowly, nice and st steady. Uh, again, this, this testimonial is a couple of months old now. So, oh, Charlie hit the, he hit the 10 properties actually a while back. He posted in the group. So, he joined the double digit club, but just slowly trucking on, no rush, just find the right property at the right pace. Uh, the landlord's got to be okay to work with, the cash flow's got to be good, and slowly and steadily building an awesome business yourself. So this is a close-up of the um, support group. This is everything, really. I think support is absolutely crucial to everything, and I think it's criminal these days when people run training events and they don't offer after support, because I don't know about you, I've been on training events where I felt a bit of overwhelm and I've come home and because there's no support you're kind of stuck and you can see down in the bottom left hand corner there, you just want uh, right, he used to run the Berkshire Property Meet, he 
is also part of our community. Uh, this is where we keep all our contracts, our property management contract. Do you know there's a lot of contracts out there, some of them really dodgy. Uh, when people try to sell you a basic contract, just um, run away, I would say. We spent two to three thousand pounds on our contract now, and it's actually called a guaranteed rent agreement. And there's a very good reason that it's called that. This is the search box where you can find pretty much everything you need to know about rent to rent. Um, you could call this community the encyclopedia of rent to rent because we've we've got a 270 page manual which is on version uh, 17 now. We update it every two months, so it's c c cutting edge. We've got a group full of experts, everything you could possibly need to know. So it could be called the encyclopedia actually of rent to rent. And we told you about the map down there in the corner. And I really do believe support is like everything. Um, if, if you get if somebody's trying to sell you a, a course with no support, like don't buy it, I'd say. Uh, this guy's huge in the group, Dan. He's a great guy. He likes to support everybody. I think um, he's a believer as I do. Really. The more you give people, the more you, uh, you get back and karma and all that. And uh, I know Dan works with his mum. He lived in Portugal for quite some time. Got a bit of a suntan going on there, I think. And you can see, and he, he's doing amazingly as well. All these testimonials are probably, uh, at least the, this is a couple of weeks old for sure, I'd say. Um, so people are just trucking on with it day by day. So where does rent to rent work? I don't know where you are listening to this, but um, we've got people in our in our group from all over the UK, down in Truro, uh, across the water in Belfast, people doing up in Edinburgh, doing very well, London. Uh, we're over there in Br Br uh, Bristol in Somerset. Funny thing is, uh, we read online about people. They say, um, I'm doing rent to rent in Oxford, and I can't seem to get it to work. And somebody comes into our group, also from Oxford, Oxford, and they seem to be able to get it to work. And I think it's just having that support there is, you know, the big thing. But you've got to know your streets, uh, you've got to know your areas inside out, you've got to know where it works, where it doesn't work, and that's something that we can help you with in our training days. And we spend a lot of time on that, pinning down people's gold mine areas. Um, something else we give people for free, I like to give away lots of stuff for free. A guide to living is the house rules, everybody who comes Excuse me, everybody who comes on the training day gets that for free. Plus, I'll tell you how you can get a free copy of 52 multi -let tips on our discovery day. I'll tell you how we do that. Uh, so this house, guess who this property belongs to? I'm going to do a little case study now. See the house down there? It's a big old Victorian property in Bristol, and it belongs to, yes, this lady. Um, this was a lady, she'd, uh, she'd got a couple of properties. One's a flat, it wouldn't really work out for us, so we took the house off her. She'd, um, it was a discombobulated house because she'd set the rents at 350 when the tenants told her that's what the rent should be. So that's how she set the rents. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a room up in the attic that somebody told her was too small as a bedroom, so she never used it as a bedroom for many, many years, but in actual fact it was fine. But she just got promoted in work, and because uh, she was going to be travelling all over the place, she just handed us the keys. She said, just take care of it, please, and, and there she goes, she was gone. So she was totally stressed, um, the house was a hassle for her, N nobody was really paying the rent in the house for the last two years, and I think if she'd have continued with that, it put such a strain on you. She said to us that the last thing she thought about when she went to bed in the evening was the house, and the first thing that she thought about w w when she opened her eyes was the, the house. Uh, she gave us the keys and this is what we did. We've, we've turned the top bedroom um, into a room. Well, well it was a room. Uh, we've, she's putting a couple of en-suites in some of the bedrooms as well. We're kind of in the, in the process of uh, t t doing that. One of the bedrooms on the ground floor, i just go back. You can see there's a living area and a dining room as well. And the reason there is a dining room because the tenant said they needed a separate room to eat their food. And she believed it. So the kitchen was big enough for a kitchen diner, so that worked well. And the, the dining room, we could turn that into another bedroom. So the number is stacked for us. And you can see we get £3,000 in from the tenants. Uh, the owner gets 1100 utilities 430 And we actually earn £220 more out of this property than the owner does. And she loves us for it because the headache is gone. And also POM, does anybody know what that stands for? That stands for peace of mind, and that's what we're trying to give the, the owners of the properties, and that's a huge one, giving them peace of mind. Um, the top bedroom is actually in the throes of being done as we speak, and when that's done, we will give the owner a big slice of the money of that as well, um, so she'll probably be earning about the same as us out of the house. 
because I believe that you've got to be fair to people, you've got to leave enough fat on the bone for everybody, um, otherwise if you don't, the whole thing will start to fall apart. So always make sure, always be uh, fair to everybody, make sure it's a win-win for everybody involved. So number seven, get to the last of our uh, top points today, is our discovery days. This is one of our discovery days, our first one actually in Heathrow, uh, everybody seems to have a business plan in their hands there. And I've got to know, even some of the guys there sat in the front row and looking back through the crowd, I know a lot of those guys there as well, and I, uh, I've got to know them over the years. So our discovery days, we charge £47 for people to come to the discovery day. That's just to pay for the hotel, and everybody gets a business plan free, as you can see in their hand. And the business plan we sell online for £47, so it's like a free event, to be honest. So I'm going to tell you some of the stuff that we cover on those days. What makes the perfect property for this strategy? Some properties are great for it, some are not so good. How to calculate if it's a potential deal or no deal. People always um, jump in and get their first deal, maybe a bit too soon, just to get the first deal done. Uh, our first deal was absolutely awful. I wouldn't say it was a lemon, it was a complete kipper, actually. And uh, on the training days, we talk about that as well, the good and the bad and the ugly as well, because I don't believe in all that rah-rah stuff you see on Facebook, everything's amazing, everything's got a downside and we like to keep it real on our training days. How to maximize your cash flow, 100%, like I say, we never have voids and we do a good little talk on the discovery day, about 20 minutes, 40 minutes, I mean, where we pin down exactly how to keep your rooms full. That in itself, it's worth possibly thousands of pounds. Um, how to find deals, just about anywhere, um, there's, there's a little system we've got, um, obviously, a top tip would be about building good relationships up with an agent. Find an agent who understands you, who you can work well with, build up a good relationship with them. But also, we've got a little system now that we can virtually turn it on and off. If we're looking for a deal, we turn it on, uh, we get loads of leads come in, and then as soon as we've got a deal, we sw switch it off again because you, you, know, you want to be swamped with uh, deals. You've got to keep it under control. Uh, this is actually a huge one, rent to rent from an agent's point of view. Um, we thought, what's the best way to do this? So we've, we've built a relationship with an agent, got the agent to come to the event, and the agent does a talk on our discovery day. Yes, you heard that right. We've got somebody from the other side, the dark side, if you like. They come to our discovery days and do a talk, all about rent to rent from an agent's point of view. I mean, how valuable is that? That's worth 10 times um, the, uh, the price to come to the discovery day. How to overcome the common objections, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, there are usually five objections. Uh, when we've analyzed every objection that agents have put to us over the years, analyzed them, they all come down to the same thing, the same five, and we go through that on our main training day. And I'll tell you this, how to avoid the common mistakes that most renter enters are inadvertently making that is costing them an absolute fortune. And we go through that a little bit, kind of step by step, and I think, yeah, we, we might give you the manual on the day as well, depending, depending um, how the budget is. But you might get that, that manual, which I showed you at the start, how to avoid the seven big mistakes. That's just some of what we'll cover. Also, how to make it irresistible to the landlord, making an agent want to work with you, and I've covered a bit of that today. We do lots of case studies on the days. We actually invite guys from our community back, guys who are doing well, and they do short talks as well, so you can see um, you know, the real deal. They tell you what's working at the moment on the streets and what's not. Um, this is a big one. Some people think that we pay for everything, when in actual fact, if you set the deal up property, we, we pay for um, hardly anything. Anything over £50 or £100, some people say, the landlord's got to pay for, and anything come to that, we pay for. But usually, anything come to that is something that's been damaged in the house, and we get the tenants to pay for that. You know, usually it's an accident, so we don't really pay for very much ourselves. Um, the cheapest refurb we've done, like I said, £150. Most expensive is probably two or three grand, I would say, and that included a toilet underneath the stairs. Go through how we do that. The two most important members of your team, uh, definitely got to get these from day one, and uh, why you should give each property a job, and I've already been talking about that a bit today. And that, we, we found people in the group, when, they, when they, give, um, they set a goal to get a house, and that house will be to finance something, the holiday, the car, whatever it is, that really drives them on. So that, that's just a bit of a snapshot, really, of what you, what you would get on the discovery days with us. So it's very valuable, very fun day, loads of fun on the day, there's lots of laughter, 
Um, everybody gets the essential business plan, and that is absolutely essential to get a plan. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, finding deals, how to find the deals, uh, as told by an agent. So we've got an agent in the room. That's pretty amazing. Uh, meet loads of guys doing really well. Really happy to share everything with you. Avoiding those seven big mistakes. And we see these we see these mistakes being made all the time endlessly. It makes us look like cringe when we see it out there on Facebook. Uh, lots of detailed case um, studies so you can see where you need to spend your money and where you really shouldn't. And like all of our events, we do a money back guarantee so that if you get to lunchtime and you think this is not the event for you, we'll give you your money back, £47. You give us a business plan back and we'll even give you a bit of cake for the journey home. But um, you would be the first one there because we've really nailed this day down. It's such an amazing day that uh, you know nobody's ever done that yet. So what what is it all about really? Well. We think, uh, as all things in life, if you've got clarity, if you can get absolute clarity to what you're trying to do and um, explain to the agent as well in clear terms, then that's going to give you the confidence to move forward a pace. Of course, it will, because you're absolutely sure of yourself. Um, the confidence will give you the momentum to move your business forward and keep it rolling, and that's, and that's how you create success, and it is as easy as that. So our plan or our goal is to give you absolute clarity, to create confidence, to create momentum, to create success, and that's the way that's the way we roll, I guess <laughs> you could say. So we've got a discovery day coming up pretty soon. If you check it out, you can go to mlcsdiscovery.com, and you can book your ticket right now for its forty-seven pounds. And it's um, um, there's no risk at all. So come along, see us, spend a day with us. If you like us, fine, you can decide to train with us some more. If you don't, fine, we shake hands and it's, you know, it's nice to meet you. So everybody gets a business plan. I should be there, uh, possibly with my daughter Emily. Emily comes to some events, not to all of them, but you can meet the team and we might even give you one of the manuals of the seven big mistakes as well. So pretty much everything you need to get started. So that's it for me today, I think. Thank you very much for sharing your time with me. And I hope to see you very soon. So just go to www.mlcsdiscovery.com and book your place. Okay, thank you.